Recently, there has been a very interesting thread by Sam Altman, the creator of ChatGPT on X, where he asked people about things people want to see from him this year. And in this thread later, he made a shocking statement. AGI is not coming anytime soon, at least in 2024. But is everything really that bad for OpenAI? And what can we really expect to see in 2024? Now first, let's rewind the clock and see the whole story. So on December 23rd, there is been a tweet from Sam asking, what would you like OpenAI to build slash fix in 2024? There were many replies from people and just two minutes after, Sam wrote this, way more requests in the first two minutes for AGI than expected. I am sorry to disappoint, but I do not think we can deliver that in 2024. This begs the question, when and what problems could OpenAI be facing right now? AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, according to Wikipedia, is a hypothetical type of artificial intelligence that could learn to accomplish any intellectual task that a human being can perform. AGI would have the ability to reason, solve problems, and learn from its experiences just like human. Sam Altman himself once gave an interesting definition of AGI, so let's take a look. AGI is basically the equivalent of a median human. And then they, they could like say, do anything that you'd be happy with a remote coworker doing, like just behind a computer. Learning how to go be a doctor, learning how to go be a very competent coder, like there's a lot of stuff that a median human is capable of getting good at. It's not any particular milestone, but the, the meta skill of learning to figure things out and that it can go decide to get good at whatever you need. And then super intelligence is when it's like smarter than all of humanity put together. The equivalent of a median human. Seems like Sam has huge plans for AGI, but what's stopping OpenAI from creating AGI in 2024? Because let me remind you that recently there have been talks about Project QSTAR at OpenAI that supposedly has successfully created the internal AGI. Yet we still don't know how OpenAI is doing this and which approach they've chosen in general, there are four ways, theoretical ways, to create AGI. Let me brush over them real quick. One, brain emulation. Brain emulations is all about simulating those intricate neural connections and processes of the human brain. This may seem oddly familiar to you because that's the basic principle behind AI, but I'm gonna come back to that a bit later. Second approach, symbolic AI. Symbolic AI is all about teaching computers to think using symbols and logic, similar to how we solve problems. It's like giving AI a set of tools to understand and work through complex ideas, making decisions like a human would. Third method, sub-symbolic AI. Basically the same thing as symbolic AI, but with one notable difference. It doesn't use clear symbols or rules. Instead, it looks at huge amounts of data to find patterns just like how we learn from experience. It's good at finding connections in big data sets that humans might miss. And fourth method, hybrid. This means mixing symbolic and sub-symbolic AI along with other techniques. This blend could help AI understand complex ideas and adapt to new situations much like how our brains work. We don't know which method OpenAI has chosen, but I believe that the way Google does things could give us a hint. We've recently done a deep dive into Google's Gemini model, what it can do and so on, but I don't believe that I've properly explained to you how the Gemini could be the key to AGI. But before I do, let's take a short pause and talk about AutoDS, the sponsor of today's video. AutoDS is an awesome dropshipping tool for eBay, Amazon, and Walmart. It simplifies adding products from places like CJ Dropshipping and AliExpress and managing inventory and prices. What's great about AutoDS is its automation. It handles tasks like product listing and order fulfillment, freeing you up to grow your business. It also allows selling on multiple platforms increasing sales opportunities. AutoDS also includes quite a few features for finding profitable products and good suppliers and this way it helps keep your prices competitive with market trends. The marketplace offers a wide range of products and a winning products feature helps identify top sellers. The TikTok spy feature is pretty unique. It lets you see what's trending on TikTok so you can find cool products to sell. Importing products is easy too whether it's one item or a bunch at once. And if you want to keep things really simple, AutoDS can handle your orders 
for you. There is also an AutoDS Academy that offers courses for dropshippers of all levels. Overall, AutoDS is a fantastic tool for making dropshipping more efficient and profitable. I will leave a link to AutoDS in the description, so be sure to check it out. Just like humans, AI models are constantly learning and adapting to new information, and while human intelligence is multifaceted, AI models have traditionally focused on specific tasks, such as image recognition or natural language processing. However, to achieve artificial general intelligence, we need to develop AI models that can process and understand information from multiple sources, just like humans do. This is where multimodality comes into play. Multimodality is the ability of an AI model to process and understand information from multiple sources, such as text, images, audio, and video. That's exactly what Gemini was trained to do. This tech should allow AI models to grasp the nuances of the world around them just like humans do when they combine information from their senses. For example, when we read a text description of a painting, we can also see the image in our mind and we can hear the sounds of, of the artist creating the painting. This ability to combine information from multiple senses is essential for human intelligence. It is also crucial for AI if we want to create truly intelligent machines. And I think that since Google has been researching this stuff, it couldn't be a far fetch to suggest that OpenAI is moving in the same direction. But wait, I still haven't explained how multimodality works in practice. Basically, Gemini and systems like it use a variety of different separately trained AI models that all work together, usually under the supervision of another model that was trained specifically to govern all other models. It's like hierarchy, with one model being the overseer and others the employees. And this is one of the most straightforward ways to reach something like AGI. The main reason being the relative simplicity of this approach. I don't mean that it is a simple task in any way, but combining many AI models with separate training and algorithms to work as one technically is easier than programming one model that is capable of doing everything at once all by itself. Again, we still don't know how OpenAI plans to do things. They can do the same thing Google does or choose a more complicated way like stimulating the brain, but okay, if AGI is not coming in 2024, so what is? What can we expect from Sam Altman? In the same Twitter X, thread, Sam wrote a summary of popular requests and it's quite interesting. I find the text on this screenshot really important because Sam definitely had reasons to choose these things and would have no reason to choose something he hasn't thought about. So I suppose this is basically a complete list of all the things that we're getting in 2024. One, AGI. We've talked about that already and Sam asked for patience, we'll give him that. Surprises. Two, GPT-5. So much has been said about GPT-5 already, but one thing is clear, GPT-5 is coming in 2024, and it's a big deal in the AI world. It's going to be a major upgrade from ChatGPT, which uses GPT-4. Expect GPT-5 to be larger, more powerful, and way better at creating text on any topic. Sam Altman, the head of OpenAI, hints that it will have cool new features and functionalities that will make using it a great experience. Experience. Three, better voice mode. Yep, ChatGPT can speak, but this feature has been only available on mobile devices, and apparently we can expect it to come to the web app too, and it's huge. I can say that I'm tired of typing my prompts, but I'm tired of typing my prompts. It would be really nice to just say what I want. I also hope that ChatGPT will sound more realistic and match tone and mood. Rest in peace, Siri and Google Assistant. Fourth change, higher rate limits. Rate limits in ChatGPT you control how much text you can generate in a certain time. This limit has increased a couple times already and GPT-4 now can generate more than any other language model. And these limits are going to be increased in 2024 once more, allowing us to do more with ChatGPT faster. Five better GPTs. We've made a whole video about my GPTs, what they can do and how they can be the future of AI. So be sure to watch it. But long story short, 
These are customizable mini ChatGPT that can do a variety of small things tailored just for you. Text generation, images, web search, and so on. And in 2024, we can expect them to get even cooler, generate better text, and handle more complex tasks like reasoning, summarizing, translating, and answering difficult questions. Whoa, that's a lot of changes. Six, better reasoning. Here, everything is in the name, nothing else to add. Seven, control over degree of wokeness behavior. This one sounds really interesting because I personally haven't really noticed any issues with wokeness of ChatGPT, but apparently ChatGPT can be a bit too left-winked, so it could be great to control how woke or what kind of behavior it will have. This means we would set it up to match our preferences, whether we want it to be neutral, more conservative, or liberal, or even have a humorous or polite tone. But that's just predictions. Sam didn't really clarify this point. Eight, video. I feel like this one doesn't need an introduction. It could be two things, in my opinion, either generating videos or understanding videos like in that video from Google that turned out to be fake. But can you just imagine asking ChatGPT to analyze the video, generate storyboards, extract b-rolls, and do all sorts of things Call me a dreamer, but I think if ChatGPT was capable of working with video files, it would be such a huge selling point that it could probably kill the majority of plugins and video-focused AIs. Of course, this could end up being something like Dolly, aka generating videos from scratch, and I would still be happy because if the consistency and quality will be the same as with Dolly, then there will be basically no point in paying for stock videos every month. It would be so easy to just ask ChatGPT to generate a bunch of videos with all the necessary visuals. Honestly, I haven't been this excited about the year for quite some time. Nine, personalization. Here, I think everything is also pretty trivial and understandable. Sam doesn't clarify anything in his tweet, but we can deduce that he will give us even more capabilities to personalize ChatGPT and its responses. This year, we already got custom instructions, and if they get an update with even more variables, it could be a huge huge shift. Maybe we could see something like a personal vocabulary or deep customization on the style that ChatGPT uses to write our texts and so on and so forth. And all those copywriters out there, beware of this. You better start learning new skills like programming. Oh, wait, ChatGPT will do that even better than it can now. Gosh, the more I talk about it, the more it seems to me like soon AI will do all the work for us and there will be no things left for people to do. Okay. 10. Better browsing. Apparently, ChatGPT will learn how to properly search and access information from the internet, which could make it even smarter. I can already see students getting excited, thinking of all those research papers and home assignments that they would complete in minutes with this improved model. It would be nice to see GPT-5 learning how to assess the information, its quality, and combine the authentic pieces, ignoring all the false information, because right now, ChatGPT can still struggle with information even if it's something simple. It can give false responses, forget to correct itself, and be pretty unobservant. Let's just hope that 2024 will fix that. Wait, what is that little message from Sam at the bottom? We'll keep reading and we will deliver on as much as we can. And plenty of other stuff we're excited about and not mentioned here. Plenty of other stuff not mentioned here. Sam, 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 what are you hiding from us? If that's not AGI, then what? I think we need to be reasonable here and look at what can really happen, at least for now. The most plausible thing to happen is the final launch of the delay GPT store. If you don't remember, right after the introduction of MyGPTs, OpenAI promised to launch a store where people would be able to sell their specifically trained models. But it never happened and there were no comments from OpenAI. However, this feature is definitely the closest one to being completed and ready for launch. ChatGPT already has something similar to that, but all the models there are free and available to all users, which doesn't really look like a proper store. Combine that 
that with all the previous leaks about improved GPTs and the picture becomes clear. Many people have already created their custom GPTs and with the improved capabilities, they will further hone them, add in more and more features, finally turn the GPTs into something that can be worth paying money for. Because I have already tested dozens of different GPTs and none of them was good enough to convince me to pay even a dollar for it. So I expect this store when it launches to have a bunch of really powerful and smart GPTs. Another thing that I hope to see resolved is the limit of messages for GPT-4. Currently, the limit is set to 40 messages per three hours. The main reason for it, of course, is the lack of processing power. OpenAI's computing department definitely cannot keep up with the demand that people have for GPT-4. So I think one of the focuses for OpenAI this year will be optimizing the model further to the point of it having zero limits whatsoever, just like the GPT-3.5. Of course, this would need substantial financial investments, but judging by all the drama that we saw a few weeks later with Sam Altman being fired and rehired with the help of Microsoft, OpenAI definitely has the money for all the necessary upgrades. I just hope this comes sooner rather than later because GPT-4 is really cool and I get pretty frustrated with these limits when I try to do serious work. So Sam, please, fix that. Another thing that was found hidden in the ChatGPT client is called Project Sunshine. And apparently it is a special version of ChatGPT with memory. And by looking at the leaks, we can see just how huge this thing could be. Let's just look at the video and read the notes from the developers. Your GPT will carry what it learns between chats, allowing it to provide more relevant responses. As you chat, your GPT will become more helpful, remembering details and preferences. Your GPT has been designed to follow your instructions in chats, you can reset your GPT's memory or turn this feature off in settings. Next, the video shows us the so-called temporary chats. Here is what the text says about it. Temporary chats won't appear in your history and your GPT won't remember anything you talk about. We may still keep a copy for up to 30 days for safety purposes. Your GPT won't be aware of previous conversations. It will still follow your custom instructions if if they are enabled, temporary chats won't be used to improve our models. And I already like the sound of that. Right now, all the chats are used to train the model. And all those false instructions and bad prompts that we write sometimes lead to the model being sluggish and responding incorrectly. But just like I mentioned before, in the settings, there would be a button to reset the memory. And what's even better, there is a special button titled memory off. I guess it's supposed to turn off the memory of your personal client, but still improve the overall GPT. It all sounds too good to be true, but I see no reason for it not to exist. My GPT has gotten pretty tired and dull after a year of active use, and sometimes its responses could be far from perfect or even okay. So if Project Sunshine eventually gets released, it's gonna be a life-changing feature for me. Of course, we can put on our tinfoil hats and start purely guessing what the year holds for us, fantasize about super intelligence, the rebellion of the machines, and so on. But let's keep our heads cool and our minds open for new things. And of course, let's keep the passion for AI hot in our hearts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.